بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب زدني علما okay so the next thing i'll i'll discuss about the rules like in the previous section we discussed the why we generally go with multiple areas as i said to minimize the size of the database to minimize the number of advertisements now once we decided to go with multiple areas now we need to follow some rules like the designing rules so like i said if you remember in the previous basic topics we have used only one area so normally in what scenarios we can go with one area like if you have 30 to 50 routers that's what uh, cisco recommend number let's say if you have 30 to 50 routers and each router is having let's say 3 to 4 interfaces so roughly around 100 networks so you can go with one area so any number less than uh, 30 to 50 routers we can go with a single area uh, where you can just make all the routers in one single area let's say 30 plus routers and that area number can be any number you can use either area 0 or you can use just area 100 so when you're using one single area you can use any number okay so let's say if my design goes more than 100 routers like i said if you have some uh, 30 plus routers i can go with any area number like i can go with area 10 or area 20 or area 30 but when your design goes beyond that point let's say i got 100 plus routers and each router is having three to four subnets so it goes around three to four hundred subnets now we we need to go with multiple areas again because if you don't go with multiple areas again there are some problems which we discussed that will increase the sql utilization so those problems again come into picture so we want our network to perform more better so we need to go with multiple areas so the first rule is whenever you decided to go with multiple areas like two three four any number so i decided to add some routers let's say these are the routers and i decided to go with another area like 30 routers here 30 routers here or 30 40 like that 30 to 50 that's what our uh, recommended number so let's say i'm adding 30 plus routers here in another area now whenever you go with two areas then the rule is the second area should be area zero which means i can go with area 10 any number you can use like we give some numbers for the areas and the number can be any number probably you can use any number normally but when we use two areas then you cannot say i'll use area 10 and area 20. now this is wrong this is not going to work so basically whenever you go with two areas one area should be zero means you can design area 10 and area zero or you can use any any number here but the second number should be zero compulsory so that is a rule so if i say I'll, I'll go with 10 and 20 that is not going to work so area zero is mandatory whenever we go with two or more than two areas so when you have must have one area called area zero when you have two or more Generally, we call this area zero as a backbone area. Backbone area where you connect all the other areas. Again, I'm coming to the backbone design in the next. Okay. So the area zero is referred as a backbone area. That is what technically we call it as backbone area. Okay. So that is your second rule. So the first rule is when you use one area and you use any number. And the second rule is when we use two or more than two areas, the area zero should be present compulsory. Now the third rule is all the non-backbone areas. Now non-backbone means any other area other than zero. We call them as non-backbone. Like let's say I'm creating area 30, area 40, area 50 like that, and some routers here. So basically all these areas are called non-backbone areas. So when I say non-backbone means other than area zero. So the third rule says that all non-backbone areas must connect to area zero. So which means any other area should be using area zero as a transit area. Now what, what that exactly mean? So it means that let's say I decided to design one topology. Let's say I got some routers 
this is how they are connected let's say the connectivity device and i got some routers like this so assume this is just a, like a rough topology how my uh, routers are connected let's say so there are plenty of numbers so i decided to go with multiple areas so i decided that okay this part on the left side i'm going to assign them in area 10 and then i decided to make an another area like let's say i decided to go with this part as area zero that is good and i decided that this part maybe 30 to 40 routers here decided as area 20 let's say any number you can use apart from zero zero is something uh, must and apart from the remaining numbers can be any number you can use and now i decided that this particular part this part whatever the leftover part i want them to make as another area to group them in another area so let's say i'm, I'm going with area 30 here now probably this area is not going to work and the reason is when you are designing so every non backbone area must connect to area zero means it has to connect to any one router which belongs to area zero so basically there it means is like every non backbone area when you are designing it should be like this something like this so one router like this so something like this so area zero should be the backbone area or the transit area means when any traffic is coming from area 30 let's say 30 or let's say 50 here it should go to the router this is the router which belongs to zero and from there it will go to the next area maybe area 60 let's say so it's not like it should go via area zero it should go via any one router of the area zero so if you see this design here now this area 30 is not connecting to area zero so it's actually connecting to area 20 and probably this area is not going to work means whatever the routes advertisements they will not go to other area by default so again there is another solution called virtual link we'll talk about that in the advanced topics uh, probably but normally as per the default design this area 30 is not going to work because this is not as per the rules so when you are designing let's say this is your uh, one design here you can see basically I'm, I'm just making this all head office router and the branch offices in area zero and then i'm i'm going to assign this router as a border router and all the routers in this branch office let's say this is on on one of the city connects to small towns here probably in area 10 and this in area 20 and this in area 30. now this design works because when this router router one let's say want to communicate with router two so it goes to this border router and this router belongs to area zero also so from there it will go directly here if you have a connection or it will go from this side and then it will it will communicate something like this so when you are designing this you have to keep this in mind so every non backbone area must connect to the area zero or any normally any router of area zero it should connect so that is like the compulsory rule so in this design if i want to add more routers or in new area let's say i need to have something like this so let's say this is how they are connected i got some routers and i can assign this as one area let's say area 50. So likewise, I can design one more area, area 70, some routers here, okay? So I'm not drawing the routers, but probably you can have multiple routers in that. And of course, this area is not going to work. So basically in this example, this area 30 is not going to work because area 30 is not connecting to area zero. So if you want to connect, again, you need to have one router connects to any one router. Now you can make area 30 like this. Now this will work. If you design this way if you don't do that then it's not going to work so this is again the rule you need to keep in mind and the next rule is like you need to have at least one border router now generally the router which connects now here in this example you can see this router is called area border router because this router is a member of area one so one interface in area one 
and another interface in area zero means it is it is going to maintain the it is going to receive the advertisements lss of both the areas and also it is going to maintain the database of both the areas generally if you verify show ip osp of database so this router will participate in both the areas algorithms so you need to have at least one border router compulsory you can have more than one also and this border router is responsible for exchanging the routes between both areas because there should be one common router which is participating in both both the uh, area advertisements and that router we call as area border router so how to identify the router which is a member of both areas like in this example here so this is your border router because if you observe here this router is having one interface in area 50 and another interface in area so this is your border router and here this is your border router and here maybe this is your border router okay so typically border router is a router which connects to two or more than two areas maybe it is also connecting to one more area here so it depends like you can see there are four areas it can connect or five areas it depends on your design but generally when we say border router means it is connecting to more than one area so you must have at least one border router compulsory so at least one interface in both areas which is going to connect both the areas in general so this is one more rule you need to keep in mind so finally the other the final rule is like the interfaces facing each other must be in the same area so which means let's say i got these three interfaces three routers now this opposite interfaces these two must be in the same area so as per the design let's say i'm assigning this in area 10 the opposite interface also should be in area 10 if i'm assigning this interface in area 20 or 0 let's say the opposite interface also should be in area 0 but let's say if i design if i advertise design means advertising if i advertise this interface in area 10 and the opposite interface is in area 0 or area 10 or, or area 20 or area 30 other than same area the neighborship will not establish so when they exchange the hello messages initially so the hello messages the neighborship will establish based on the hello messages if you remember the two-way state and in that they will also exchange some additional information and that information has to match like the area mismatch if there is an area mismatch then basically the neighborship will not establish okay so when you're designing this is also one important thing we need to know of course apart from that authentication there are other other parameters also should match uh, we'll see that in the troubleshooting section probably what are the parameters to match but if there is a mismatch of uh, areas on the opposite interfaces then also the routers will not form the neighbor relationship like here you can see this interface and this interface in area 0 and of course these two interfaces in same area 51 here and likewise these interfaces in area 1 like that and again you can see these two interfaces in area 1 here that's the rule so the interfaces facing each other must be advertised or configured in the same area so these are the five rules you need to keep in mind so let me quickly summarize you must have one area area 0 compulsory means one area if you're using you can use any number 10 20 30 but when we use two areas you have to use compulsory zero so zero must be present and every non-backbone area must connect to area zero means area one and area 51 cannot connect directly they must connect via one router which is belonging to area zero and you must have one border router compulsory you can have more than one also but minimum one border router which is receiving the advertisements of both the areas and responsible for exchanging the uh, information or the routes between the areas and finally the last rule is the interfaces facing each other must be in the same area